Oh, hello. What are you up to? Oh, I just come up to a bit more on the um, multi power. All right. Yeah, what are you doing with this? I'm going to start cleaning it out. So we've got all the bits to do. So uh, then there's got to be a service and stuff. But first, I just want to get everything out and so I can make a start. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you're going to be playing with the older multi power then. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's pretty tidy. This thing. It's isn't all right. It? As we said, we know it wants work. And it everything. does, but it's, it's it's unusually clean though, isn't it? Well, it's usually been hammered yeah, around. No, for yeah. off farm, it, it's all right, and it has got dual power. It's which, got dual which power, which is you know. A better version of Yeah, but don't forget that it was 10 years later. That it yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, because it's got wheels, look. Because they did invent the wheel eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Um, no, but it, I think a lot of people... It's like with... Um, so the multi-pass system, I'm trying to work out. Because everyone thinks a splitter is like a, a half a gear up, don't they? Like an yeah. overdrive. But multi-power is... Multi-power was actually... High multi was an overdrive. Yeah. It was about 10% faster than a three speed gearbox. Then the direct drive, so it's 3% uh, faster. And then Below, low well, multi was just a little bit lower, so it was an over and under. You see, with dual power, what people don't, a lot of people don't realise is that obviously you've got the torques and the hair yeah. as, as such high and low, and everyone thinks well, the, the, the hair is a half speed quicker. It's not. The hair is actually direct drive. Yeah. The torus is actually the underdrive. It's yeah. The dual power is actually an under. It gives you a split down. Yeah. And a lot of people that they think you're getting a half a split up, you're not. You, direct drive is is the hair. But then that's why multi power was everyone. Oh yeah, it's faster. Well, it was, but the Ford was the same because it was an underdrive. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and then obviously, like you said before, you got uh, international with their torque amplifier. And then power synchron on the old. Mm. That's that. Uh, the that's thirty-three's power synchron. Power synchron, isn't it? Power yeah. synchron. Yeah. I don't know what way that is. I think is that overdrive. To be honest, I've synchron? never driven one without power synchron, so something. I don't know. So there's a question for all your viewers: yeah. Is power synchron on a John Deere an underdrive or an overdrive? That's a good question. Well, I actually don't know the answer. So I've, I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever driven one without it. Have you? No, no so I don't have. No. I know they made them. I always used to like watching when you know the lever. You put it in, you yeah. pull up somewhere, turn her off, and then you watch then the lever. Watch the lever come, pop. come back on yeah. the phone. It just amused yeah. me. But, uh, but then I, yeah, because my old twenty eight fifty, it was actually push the um, no, you push the lever. Shift, the, but then on the later ones, that one is on the lever. lever. You have yeah, got yeah, the little stubby little lever. Little, on, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think it was good. They, right. were, they well, were a good tractor, weren't they? What the, the green John, that, that green yeah, thing there? Yeah, to a point. Yeah. <laughs> better than some anyway so, yeah okay. um but yeah no yeah. that's uh that's a nice unit what you got there yeah, yeah. well we're going to get on with that and uh see what we can break on that now Very good. since the last video you can see we've made a bit of progress here uh i've got the input shaft out i've got the main shaft out and all that's left is the counter shaft and pto so I've got the other parts on the bench and I think this video I'd like to focus on how multi-power is actually controlled. So what happens when you flick the on-off switch on the dashboard. So now we've got it on the bench, you can see a bit more easily what's actually going on. So starting here, if you remember, that is the main input shaft for the gearbox driven from the friction plate, the clutch. That is the main, that's the PTO and hydraulic pump drive main shaft. Goes in through this input housing and bearing carrier. On the top, we've got your multi-power spool valve. Um, that is the um, constant mesh drive for the PTO shaft and hydraulic pump. There's the multi-power clutch pack. That is the high multi-power gear. And that is low multi-power gear. First thing you'll notice is that high multi-power gear will turn independently of the shaft. Okay. The clutch casing is attached to the main shaft 
and the high multi-power gear, gear is driven from the output side of the clutch casing and it's attached to the um, driven side of the clutch. So when that clutch engaged engages, drive is transferred to this. If that clutch is disengaged, drive goes through the low multi-power gear. So why is the spool valve on top of the input shaft bearing carrier? It's probably a good question. Well, if you look, there's only one pipe on it. So that means that uh, that pipe is pressurized all the time. If you pull the spool valve into high multi-power position, it allows the pressure to go through the spool into this casing here. And there's a gallery, oil gallery, around the inside of this casing, um, which lines up with um, a little chamber on the input shaft. So if I just slide this off here, looking down inside the bearing carrier, you can see there's a little hole. That little hole allows pressure from the valve to come down and it lines up with this groove here. You see that groove here has a little hole that goes right through and two little cast iron piston rings here. You can just see the overlap machined into the end of them so that when they're compressed they give a nice tight seal. Drilled along the center of this shaft to here is another hole and then another little oil gallery there. That oil gallery lines up with the multi-power clutch which is splined on there. So when you pressurize, you flick the switch into high, allows oil under pressure to come into here, up there, flows out there, and the back up to about there is a hydraulic piston. That piston compresses these multiple clutch plates here, so you've got um, pressure plates and friction plates in here alternately. The friction plates you can see with the teeth around them, and that's where the high multi-power gear fits in. So when you pressurize this, it engages that clutch and locks the high multi-power gear um, into drive, transferring drive through to the high multi-power. Does that make sense? So let's go over it again. Pressure from the hydraulic pump is supplied there. Spool valve diverts pressure into the oil gallery along the side of the shaft, pressurizes the piston at the back of the clutch plate here, compresses the clutch and transfers drive to the high multi-power gear. Okay. You've seen the parts in the gearbox and you've seen the parts on the bench, so let's have a quick look at how power actually flows through the multi-power unit. Imagine you've got the engine flywheel where my hand is here, and the clutch. The clutch is engaged and you're in high multi-power. So power comes down through here on the, main, on the input shaft. The multi-power clutch is pressurized, so gear number two, the input overdrive gear, is being driven. That transfers the drive down through here and this part here is a ratchet mechanism. It's an overrun clutch or a freewheel if you like which we will look at in a lot more detail in the next video. But the drive comes down through the high multi-power gear through that onto the countershaft 
back up to the gearbox main input gearbox drive shaft and onto the main shaft and then here you've got your normal three-speed gearbox and at the back you've got your planetary reduction box for the high and low okay so you can see power goes in here down through the overdrive not the overdrive unit through the overrun unit and up back into the main gearbox okay so let's have a look at what happens in and if you want to stop by the way the video and look at that in more detail you're welcome to do so so let's look at what happens when we're in low okay so same gearbox different power flow again flywheel and clutch is here we're in low multi-power so that clutch is disengaged and gear number two the overdrive input gear is also disengaged so power comes down the shaft into the low multi-power gear down through the low multi-power gear through the, the ratchet overrun clutch back up into the gearbox and out towards the back wheels again Here's a diagram if you want to have a little bit more of a look at it. Feel free to pause the video and study this if you're so inclined. Anyway, this brings me very neatly round to the first thing that people always say about a multi -pack. Well, the second thing, because everyone goes, oh, it runs away on hills. But the second thing that people say, oh, it's much faster. Well, yes, it is. Because... Um, if you have a standard three-speed box, you don't have any of this here. The input shaft just goes straight into the three-speed box here and then the planetary reduction there. By adding multi-power, you're actually putting a 10% overdrive. By default, when it's in high multi-power, it's got a 10% overdrive. So it is, theoretically, 10% faster than the non-multi-power models. When you're in low, it's actually 10% slower than non-multi-power models. So it's an underdrive and underdrive in low and an overdrive in high. There isn't a direct, the equivalent of a direct drive from one to one, as there are in many gearboxes. So we've answered one of the questions: why it's faster than a, a non-multi-power gearbox. Um, that leads two other questions. The first one which people always ask is why have multi-power tractors got two pumps? Well that's pretty simple. The Scotch yoke pump which we've driven off here, if that was the only pump that was uh, installed, when you lift uh, something out of the ground or you pull open a spool valve or something like that, you're going to lose pressure here and it'll drop into low multi-power and then you'll be running away down a hill and everyone will say oh it runs away on hills so that's another important question that we need to uh, answer um, why it doesn't roll back on hills that's something that i think we'll talk about in the next video um, and finally how to drive multi-power i'll go into that in more detail again in the next video but the important thing to remember is that, according to the marketing literature, according to every manual that you can get, for these um, tractors, you drive in high under normal circumstances. There is no reason to be in low unless one of three situations arises. One. You're going uphill and you start struggling. Two, you've got a soil engaging machine and you start struggling. Three, you need to drop the ground speed without dropping the engine speed when you're operating something like a PTO driven uh, forager or something like that. And there's a knot in a row that you need to slow down. You don't want to drop the revs because you want to get the knot to clear, but you want to slow down so you don't bung up the pickup. Those are the occasions when you'll just knock it down half a gear Flick the lever, go into low until you're through the sticky patch, till you're through 
um, climbing the hill or till the uh, um, the knots cleared through the forager. You don't drive around the yard with it in low. You don't drive downhill with it in low. You're not. You shouldn't really need to drive on the road unless, of course, you're going uphill with a heavy trailer. So bear that in mind, and you won't come to any accidents. So. For next week, or the next video rather, I was uh, thinking that we will talk a little bit about, well, we're going to first of all cover the overrun mechanism down here. Um, we're going to cover what can go wrong here, why it can go wrong, how much it costs to fix it, because it's not what people think it is, um, and why it doesn't roll backwards on hills when you're in high multi-power. I think that should be enough. Anyway, thanks all for watching and thanks to my new subscribers. Hope you've enjoyed this. And I'll see you next time. Bye.